Hi there and welcome to the 12th row in the Get Fit By Rowing series. Now depending on how you're doing these, if you're doing them four sessions a week, you're going to be at the end of week three, so well done. But if you're doing them only three a week, or if you're doing them five a week, you're in completely out of the order in weeks, and that doesn't matter as long as you're doing these in order. Or maybe you've stumbled across this one as your first row along and you're like, ah, what, row 12? I'm going to stop now. Don't, 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 don't. Either do this one on its own or go all the way back to row one and start through the series. There's a playlist here on the channel that you you can check to find out what's going on, where we are, and all that stuff, so go take a look. Now today's workout is going to be one of the hard workouts, the hard tempo ones. What that means is we're not at absolute max, but we're also not at that low, kind of easy row. We're right in the middle with a hard intensity. Because what we're doing is six three minute intervals with two minutes rest in between. Sounds easy. But those three minute intervals, I want you to do at quite a high intensity. Not max, but quite a high intensity. What does that mean? Well, from a perceived effort point of view, we're kind of around about seven or eight out of 10, but that's kind of meaningless. What does that mean? Well, if you have a heart rate monitor on, then your range you're working at is kind of zone three to zone four. I'm leaving that up to you. I'd rather you are in zone four, which is around about 80 to 90% of your max, rather than the 70 to 80% zone three, but depending on where you are in your fitness journey, maybe you want to be at that 70 to 80%. <laughs> I just bit my tongue. Um, but what I'd say is stick to it, okay? If you decide to go 70 to 80, hold it there. Do it in the zone three. If you decide to do 80 to 90%, hold it within that band. Don't rock between the two of them um, because you're just, you're kind of muddling the waters or muddling the waters if you do it that way, okay? And finally, just to say, if uh, you're doing this uh, by training sessions on a 2K, based training pace, like you're against your average uh, 2K time, then I want you to do this probably round about 2K plus five to nine. That's your kind of broad move, okay? And the same thing applies. Pick what you want and then stick with it through these intervals, okay? They're short and fast, but if you get the intensity up there, it should feel hard, okay? So that was a huge intro, wasn't it? I'm so sorry. Uh, let's get into our four minute warm up uh, before we get going on our main session. So uh, on the concept two, which I'm still on, uh, please go to your drag factor and set it to where you want it to be. If you don't have any idea where to set the lever, then just set it between four and five and then watch the video I have here about drag factor, which is actually what that controls. Next up, if you can set your monitor to eye height, I can on a concept two, you might not be able to. And finally, uh, if you're able to adjust your foot stretcher height, set them to a point where you can come into the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically comfortably. If you are set too high on those foot straps, then it can be a little bit tough to get there. If you're set too low, you can go scooting straight past because all the angles are wrong and it might kind of bind up your toes and stuff and you'll lose power, right? Oh, crikey, it feels like an hour ago I started this intro. So this four minute warm up, we're gonna just start off on the gentle push of the legs, get our body moving and then we'll increase, all right? Here we go then, in three, two, one, let's go. Now I'm gonna do this around about 20 strokes a minute if you want to have some kind of pace structure for this warm-up. But I often describe this initial intensity as, as though you were standing up out from a squat. Maybe you're holding like some shopping bags or something. Just enough of a push to get moving and to fuel your body kind of needs to put some effort into the machine. But this is a warm-up, okay? This isn't a hit the ground running as fast as you can up. Now today's main workout is intense. Like I say, we're at that hard point. So if you want to continue the warm up, even when I'm done, by all means do. I mean, I tend to, I'll recap today's session anyway, after the warm up. So you could always row through that recap just to make sure you're nice and warm. Okay. So for the next minute, let's push a little harder with the legs. Increase the intensity, get the heart rate up, the breathing rate up. And think about body positions. So as you come to the front of the machine, nice straight arms and a forwards tilt towards the front of your machine. And then slide forwards until your shins are vertical and then holding that forwards tilt and straight arms, push with the legs. And only when you get towards the back of the stroke do you finally swing over your hips and pull in your arms. And we'll work on that next. 
So let's take one more stroke, put one foot on the ground. Now you don't have to do these drills, continue rowing with that one leg strapped in, don't have to, you can continue rowing normally if you want to make sure you're nice and warm without having to row past this four minute warm up. But these single leg drills will help open up your back a little bit, flexibility of your hips. So they are useful. One more here and swap feet. Off we go. I always say this, but I know I'm lightning fast. <laughs> this is the only thing I'm lightning fast at, to be honest, at changing feet because I'm in socks. A bit harder to do it quickly when you're in shoes. Okay, three more strokes here, and then we'll put both feet back in. One more. So let's put both feet back in, legs straight, and roll with your back and arms. So that means rocking forwards, and then as you swing back with your back, that's when you take up the initial tension of the machine. And then you pull, okay? So that back swing has to engage first with straight arms, and then you pull, then out with the arms and rock forwards again. Okay, let's roll into the front with a forward tilt, straight arms, and push out from the front with your legs. Hold that forward tilt and arm straight position, and just push. You're working on getting used to holding this position through the leg drive, but you're also working on pushing with the feet. At the same time, the handle bites into the flywheel or water wheel or whatever your machine uses. Last one here. So those drills at the end, I mean, they help with the warm up, they help open up your body, they help with your technique and stuff, but it's just really useful sometimes to do those drills, okay? So it's useful just to spend those two minutes. So like I say, if you need to carry on warming up, please do make sure and have a quick drink anyway, or you can just kind of rock up and down the rail while I quickly describe one more time what it is we're doing today. Okay then, now if you're watching this on YouTube, you will see a counter in the top of the screen which will tell you how long it is to go until we start the main session, just in case you're continuing the warm up. And I wanna make sure you leave yourself at least 30 seconds to have a quick drink and wiggle your backside before you get started, all right? Because what we're doing today is six three minute intervals at a hard intensity with two minutes rest in between. What does hard intensity mean? Well, from a perceived effort point of view, that's round about seven or eight out of 10. But that's quite hard to gauge. So you might want to use a 2K training pace, in which case that's 2K plus five to nine, okay? So five to nine seconds slower than your 2K average pace. But please do pick your pace and stick to it through this workout if that's how you're doing it. Or you can do it by heart rate. Now. For this one, we're gonna be between zone three and zone four, okay? So that means between 70 and 90% of your maximum heart rate, but that's two zones. So you can either pick zone three and try to stay in that, but if you, if you break out of that within like one or two intervals and you know you're never gonna recover again, then just stay between 80 and 90% for the rest of the workout, okay? But just try not to break out of 90%. You can, of course, try and uh, ease off and stay between 70 and 80, but it's entirely up to you. However, if you decide to just do this workout between 80 and 90%, I want you to stay there, okay? I do not want you to ease off and go back down to 70 to 80%. Although the, the zone three people can go up to four, the zone four people can't go down to three, is the way I'm saying it. There will be an element of cardiac drift as you start each interval to get you up into those zones, but you should find within like kind of, especially once we get past uh, interval one, you should find within like a minute you're in the zone that you're gonna be in, okay? That intensity, that pace, all right? Does that all make sense? Crikey, I hope so. <laughs> so we're gonna get into uh, our first interval. I'll do this around about 26 to 28 strokes a minute in case you're wanting to follow me for stroke rates, but make sure and get that intensity up, okay? This is not low intensity, but it's not max intensity, so find your pace, all right? Let's get going then in three, two, one, let's go. Now the last thing I said there about finding your pace, is actually quite important. Really what you wanna do is kinda of keep an eye, especially if you're heart rate training, keep an eye on the pace that you're rowing at, whether that's a 500 meter pace or watts or calories per hour. Who knows you how you have 
your monitor set but I want you to keep an eye on what your pace is and your heart rate this will not only help you adjust your pace throughout each interval it'll let you know what pace to return to throughout the workout as we go through subsequent intervals now as to what to set your monitor to really that's a personal choice I tend to find calories and watts vary too much from stroke to stroke so I don't really get a proper idea of consistency whereas if I set it to 500 meter pace because it rounds up or down to a whole second it's a little bit more even so right now I'm rowing at 26 strokes a minute and at 152 pace and it's kind of just sticking there so my heart rate is at 81% of max already and so I figure 152 at 26 is what I should hold throughout this workout okay so three two last stroke oh, there you go so hopefully hang on microphone cable issues hopefully you've got the right gauge for that workout okay after the over the past three weeks of doing low intensity and max intensity work you should have worked out where that had to be intensity wise so you'll see I'm out of breath uh, heart rate is 128 beats per minute right now my maximum is 174 so in that 30 seconds I've recovered by about 30 beats a minute I think uh, so the intensity is up there but at no point did that feel max okay even the fact that I'm able to talk to you the whole way through you know it's like when I'm doing a max workout eventually I am like a motivational poster where I'm just saying single words to you <laughs> but in that interval I was able to talk to you I'm not saying that you can talk okay that's not the point okay so low intensity workouts for you they are the ones where you can talk the whole way through okay have a conversation with someone um, I seem to have developed a skill to be able to talk while I row um, a lot of it's like a breathing pattern and stuff but I can talk while I row and most of the time don't try okay this one really you should be able to get the odd sentence out but you should be concentrating more on breathing in order to get the intensity up must be said I'm probably a couple of seconds slower because I'm talking to you okay that's the kind of back off for me have a drink got less than 30 seconds to go okay so if you felt that that was in that kind of seven to eight intensity if your heart rate was in the right place and stuff then hit that same stroke rate same pace for the next interval which starts in 10 seconds crikey that was a quick two minutes wasn't it Ooh, <laughs> five seconds to go three two one go all right and now that you know what pace you want to be rowing at rather than spending the first 30 seconds of this interval in a kind of discovery period trying to work out what pace feels seven to eight out of ten or gets your heart rate up into the right zone 
you can just get right there. And the good thing about setting a stroke rate is that if ever you're doing a workout like this on your own, why would you row on your own? Why are you going to leave me? <laughs> but in my case, 26 strokes a minute means if I was doing this and not recording it, if I was listening to music or something, I'd just count down 78 strokes. And for me, counting down is a lot more motivational and rewarding than counting up. Although, what I'll sometimes do, like if I'm on a ski erg, it takes me 320 strokes to do a 2K. And so I'm not going to count down from 320 because that seems forever. Which means I'll count up to 160 and then back down from 160. So for this, I could count up to 39 and then back down again. But actually, 78, anything under 100 is okay to count down from. All right, 10 seconds to go. How many strokes? Two more. Yeah, one last one right as we hit zero. And you know, I do that all the time. If I'm cycling, where am I? Hang on. Yeah, it must be a bit of drift in my heart rate here. There's no way I'm only at 100. Oh, there we go. I've recovered to 144. So I must have finished about 154. Oh, quick drink before I talk about whatever it was I was talking about. Oh yeah, like on the bike or the treadmill, especially if I'm using Zwift, the uh, cycling and running app, I'll tend to break it down into uh, pedal strokes, especially towards the end, uh, or steps when I'm on the treadmill. So like if I know, I know I can do two kilometers in three minutes uh, at just my standard pace on the bike. Um, and so I usually ride around about 85 RPM. So I basically just go, okay, so that's 255 pedal strokes. And so I'll just kind of close my eyes and pedal 255 times if I'm in kind of in that place. But then as you kind of get towards the end, of a race, you'd take your speed goes up and cadence goes up. So you have to kind of, it's always maths, but you know what? Sometimes a little bit of maths in your head really can help distract you. In the days when I was a proper, well, a proper, huh? when I was, days of the I was a cyclist, just cycling around like the, the highlands of Scotland and things, the amount of times I'd just be doing like calculations for speed, distance, and time. Oh, just to pass the time. 10 seconds to go. <laughs> oh, six, five, four, three, two, one, go. If only my maths teacher from high school could hear me say things like that. Oh yes, when I was out on my bike, I do maths to pass the time. <laughs> really wasn't that good at school. School and, and me, we didn't really agree. I wanted to be, to be 
the drummer for Van Halen when I was at school. So I totally didn't apply myself. Only a couple of classes I enjoyed. I did years, like, I don't know, 15 years after I left school. I wrote the book DJing for Dummies and one of the first things I did was leave a message for my high school English teacher to let her know I'd written a book because I liked her I'm sure she was as surprised as I was <laughs> that I'd written a book oh. Right, sorry, that's the kind of story I should be telling in the rest interval, not in the main effort part, but hopefully you're kind of in autopilot at this stage, your intensity is up there stroke rate is up there you're just powering along minutes ago and you know if you're in the right training zone training intensity then this is how it's supposed to feel all the way to the end of the workout it may drift up a little bit but unless you really push the pace towards the end it shouldn't go anywhere near max or well it may tickle the head of Max. <laughs> Two more shows. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying there. Tickle the head of Max. Poor Max. What's he done to deserve getting his head tickled? <laughs> right. My watch is definitely not reading right today. Because it's saying I'm at 96 beats per minute. It's weird. Huge. Oh, there we go. 146 now usually my Apple watch is absolutely rock solid for heart rate but strangely in this workout I mean it had me for most of that row down at 55% of max now I am using the ErgZone uh, watch app to connect to ErgZone on my phone so it could be that's causing the issue. Just like I say, usually it's rock solid. What, what I'll do is I'll do what I've done before. And at the end of the workout, when I'm just doing my, oh, hope you enjoyed that. I'll put up, so I've got my MyZone chest strap on as well. So I'll put that up as well. And hopefully what we, we're gonna see is that my heart rate uh, goes into the yellow zone and then recovers down to green maybe, and up to yellow and green, green. Shouldn't go into red, but because this is playing silly sods I can't actually track my own heart rate so I'm just having to do this by my pace on screen and hope I'm okay I mean I'll know 10 seconds into the rest period whether my heart rate had spiked because this will eventually catch up but yeah it's not ideal it's the dangers of heart rate training to be honest okay oh and we have 10 seconds to go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go. And we are past the Bon Jovi point. We are past halfway. Just got three more intervals to go. So the purpose of this, in case you're wondering, is I mean, I want to call it performance fitness, but 
that makes it sound as though we're training for performance here. If we were doing this as a 2K training program, that's what these rows would be. The performance fitness is about holding a high intensity over periods of time in order to teach you to be able to keep the pace up even when your body starts to tell you it's getting tired but in a general fitness series like we're doing with this one this row is more about consolidating the two zones we're training in elsewhere so with the low intensity rows you are building your core fitness to be able to last the duration in this workout and by developing your VO2 max in the max intensity rows you're able to keep the intensity up and not have to back down which helps your fitness it helps your strength but it also gives you some variety because if all I did was low intensity and max intensity you'd quickly get a little bored at best okay 10 seconds to go or start to dread the max one more dread the max 146 again I still think it's reading hang on two six ten five, six twenty twenty five and ten seconds uh six twenty fives or 145 uh, but that's me having recovered for 30 seconds let's find out what the my zone thing says even if I am rowing at 81% of max like our zone saying that's actually I shouldn't be complaining that's exactly where I want to be but I doubt I'm that low uh, yeah don't know what's but yeah it could, could well be could well be maybe I'm actually surprising myself by how effective this plan has been I mean I think I did I, I glanced upon this the other day if I have a quick drink that so today's Friday on Sunday past I did the um Alp de Zwift on Zwift the cycling software which is a uh everyone who does Zwift knows about it. it's the highest climb up uh, the Alp de Zwift mountain climb blah, blah, blah. an hour and a half's worth of cycling an hour of which was climbing up the Alp de Zwift and I hadn't really done any proper bike training apart from my little 10 minute bursts in the morning and because of the fitness I've managed to gain from doing this series I was able to do the climb up the Alp de Zwift in 57 minutes which is faster than I normally do and I haven't been doing any bike training 10 seconds to go so that's all based on the fitness I've been getting from this Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. So certainly, as far as I'm concerned, this series for improving fitness is absolutely hitting the mark. And so I really hope the same is happening for you too. 
but like I keep saying, in order for this series to be effective, you have to stick to what I'm saying and do the low intensity rows at the proper low intensity in order to grow your base fitness but also to give you the energy to be able to row the max intensity workouts at max because if you can do that you're sharpening both ends of your fitness journey whereas if you push the low intensity stuff too hard not only will you dull the fitness the core fitness boosting benefits of those workouts you'll also reduce the big bowl of energy your body has to be able to row the max workouts at max you'll have to ease off as you get tired so you'll be dulling that end of the fitness scale too so instead of sharpening both ends if you stick to what I'm saying if you go rogue you'll be blunting the effects of both ends okay five four three two one oh. uh, 83% finish there I mean listen if you push the low stuff and, the, and reduce the high stuff you'll still get a training benefit but you won't get the amount of benefit that you should do by using this training protocol so say doing it my way means you can get that much fitter than if you push the low reduce the high that's kind of how much fitter you can get to doing it uh, and this workout is kind of where you would end up on the max ones if you push too hard on the low and you don't have the energy for the max this is kind of what you'd end up as and we've already got a session like this during the week so you don't need another one have a drink oh. That said, if, and this is a big if, if you want to push this last interval and take yourself up into zone five and spread your wings, blow off some cobwebs, say you wanna, you're like, you know what, this hasn't been quite the hard workout I thought it was gonna be, then for a start, do it again, but faster. You're obviously not going fast enough. But this last interval, if you want to go, say, three seconds faster and certainly nudge into that kind of above 90% then by all means do just go for it it's fine it's the end of the week you've got a rest day ahead anyway 10 seconds to go so it's fine I'm not gonna though I'm gonna stick to my own design five four three two one go and after all I'm kind of hoping you're doing this series because you trust that I know what I'm on about and really that's what it comes down to when it comes to trying to find a coach or training plans because if you're going to do the training plan 
you kind of got to trust it. If you lose trust for it, your best just to either have a conversation with your coach or if that goes nowhere, find a new coach, find someone that aligns with what you want to do, can work with your goals, but still has the expertise to help you along the way. Because I know when I started out rowing, all I wanted to do was 2K time trials and 30 minute maximum efforts because I didn't understand the benefits of the wider ranges of training I didn't quite grasp what you were meant to do in training intervals Whew. I seem to have pushed that pace <laughs> to 149 but having discovered proper training that's when I became fitter faster and less injured because <sighs> I was giving my body a chance to recover repair and repeat there's a t-shirt okay I'm gonna take these last five strokes nice and powerfully three two one oh, yeah 93 percent by the end so by the end I certainly what did I say tickled max is that what <laughs> yeah I mean they do say zone 5 if you want to talk about it at its proper point is between 95 and 100% so if I finish that at 93% I was just on the cusp of zone 4 and zone 5 so that's me justifying it to myself breaking my own rules <laughs> right have a quick drink Hopefully, I've had the heart rate up on screen that you can see when I was just talking about heart rate. I'm only saying that to remind me to put that in there when I get into the edit suite. Oh, oh right. Two minute cool down. We'll just do a standard cool down, no drills inside this one or anything. Uh, yeah, just start at your kind of warm up intensity and gradually slow down. Here we go in three, two, one, go. Oh, it's the one good thing that I miss about doing rows, those 30 minute time trials I was on about, or best efforts on Row Pro, the PC rowing software, is that most rows, when they finish, especially the really intense ones, they set up a cool down afterwards. And it's usually either 2,000 meters or nine minutes with the with what everyone tends to do not everyone what most people tend to do is roll those cools downs at 215 pace so that you cover the 2k in exactly nine minutes or in exactly nine minutes you cover 2k So it's quite a useful pace. I know that for a lot of people, 
two minutes 15 pace is actually then going flat out so don't worry I'm not not trying to speed shame you is the one thing the great thing about doing heart rate based training is that it really doesn't matter how fast I'm going how fast you're going it's just about the heart rate if we're both at 80% who's to argue we're both working as hard as each other whereas even with the 2k plus or minus pace thing although that kind of in a roundabout way can even people up it still is quite wildly different for people especially if you compare a highly trained athlete versus someone new to rowing one more stroke after this now you don't have to stop cooling down of course but I am about to enter the stretching section if you don't have time to stretch please take a moment to stretch your quads, your hamstrings and your glutes not in the shower though because I don't want you to slip and fall over but do stretch them because you don't want to seize up um, if you have space and a mat then oh yeah stretch it John will take you through how to stretch on a mat oh, excuse me and then I will take you through how to stretch if you only have space for a machine so put your legs back in the straps flick your toes slightly back towards you hands in the air and then fold forwards okay and I always say it if I've come too far from my seat I'll do that again fold forwards I always say it, that fold is really important okay this isn't about curling your even if I do have a rounded upper back now that's just because I'm lazy <laughs> but I'm folding in from that lower from the hinge um, in order to get that stretch into my hamstrings and you can obviously rest your fingers your hands on your ankles but don't pull yourself forwards but after 15 20 seconds if you want to walk your little fingers little, little fingers all the way to your toes and go oh look I managed to stretch a little bit more but because you're walking your fingers you're not pulling yourself forwards because I don't want you to injure yourself by pulling yourself forwards let's move on to glutes next so one leg up on the rail bring your uh, other foot over so your heel is inside the crook of your knee lift that knee up so you have a straight line between your face your knee and your foot hold that leg in place with one arm rotate round hold on to the back of the machine you should get a stretch now it's kind of you it's glute um, but you might sometimes find it's also helping if you need to stretch your piriformis as well it's kind of a very similar stretch to your piriformis um, it's not quite the same but it's very similar because I've been just due to the hip flexor injury I've got my left leg I've been stretching my piriformis and I kind of like all oh, right okay I can feel it's kind of the same but the piriformis stretch is very localized um, whereas this one I feel is like I've got like a hand-shaped radiation of stretch that's kind of coming up from my glutes um, so it's like I've got yeah like it's stretching so just in case just pfft. but maybe that's just my body you never know right let's change legs same thing <laughs> that for podcast listeners was the sound effects of me getting my body into position it was not Godzilla or Godzuki that's showing my age hands in the air all those who remember the cartoon Godzilla and Godzuki it was like Godzilla's was it his son nephew can't remember there's like a little baby cute Godzilla and he used to go <coughs> and blow smoke rings <laughs> very cute ah right okay uh what should we do next what do I normally do oh yeah sorry brain fart sorry ah quads next <laughs> sorry that. I'm too busy I'll tell you in a second what I was thinking about uh but we'll get into our glute stretch uh, sorry our, our hamstring no where are we quads grief John quad stretch so when we raise one finger on the monitor flick that foot up there that's another reason why I'd never make a video for like Apple Fitness or something and then pull that uh heel up towards your backside to get good stretch into your quads sorry I did I suddenly start to think about movies you see and uh like the Godzilla movies because as much as loads of people really don't rate it at all I do quite enjoy the Matthew Broderick version of Godzilla there's something nice about it. I've got a real soft spot for uh Jean Jean Reno bring me the Frenchman ever since I watched the big blue I've always loved uh Jean Reno so um and because he's in it he can do no wrong in my my mind um yeah so um and then I started to uh, I'm swapping legs that's what that noise was I started to think about other movies that I just like if it's on that I enjoy just watching 
it, like if it's on, I just kind of like I'll just zone out on and watch. And definitely in my house, the two films that do that are the Shawshank Redemption. If that's on, no matter what point in the film it's at, um, Julie and I will just sit down and watch it. And the other one is The Martian, uh, the Matt Damon Martian film. That film, I could just, I watched it over the weekend. Right, let's go do hip flexors, and I'll continue my story after we get into our first hip flexor stretch. So uh, one knee on the ground with your foot behind you, other foot in front of you with a knee above it, so you should have 90 degree, degree angles. Walk like an Egyptian on both legs. Um, and then with a good posture, what you want to do is tense this glute and then have a slight backwards lean and you should find you get that uh, stretch into there. But yeah, um, was it Saturday night? I think uh, The Martian was on and it just, it, would, it was like about half an hour into it and it was on and I just like started watching it and uh, it was quite late. Julie went off to bed and I kind of made it about an hour and I was like, oh, it's time to go to bed now. Um, I went to bed and then I woke up in the morning and as I was having my breakfast, I kind of uh, loaded up Disney Plus because of course I've got kids who got to have Disney Plus and it's like uh, watch this film The Martian let's swap legs I'm like hey great so I carried on watching it in fact I zipped back to the beginning to watch the first half hour um, and then uh, skipped to the part that I'd uh, not watched the night before then the kids came down for their breakfast and I'm like oh whatever so I had to stop it so they could watch whatever they wanted to um, and then uh, oh, make sure you tense that glute tense that glute because otherwise you lose the stretch um, and then kids went to swimming club swimming club and so I was left in the house on my own and I thought I'm gonna I've got nothing to do I'm gonna finish watching The Martian and I swear I got to the end of that film right, and, it's, and I do love the film anyway but I got to the end of that film and my first instinct was I want to watch it again I didn't don't worry <laughs> I'm not I'm not quite that bad, but my first thing is I just love that film. It's just it's wrapped up so nicely and and uh, all the characters you like and yeah, I just and I got to the end of the film. I'm like I could just watch that again, uh, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, right. That's just done with the hip flexors. Um, I used to do it when I was younger, like I say, like. 10, 12, I used to watch the same films all, all the time. I used to watch the Cannonball Run, the Burt Reynolds one, over and over and over and over and over again. I'd, God, I love that film. Uh, right, okay, uh, what are we doing next? Shoulders, so hands straight in front of you, bring it across your body, and then using your other arm, just loop it across to add in a little bit more kind of tension, pulling it across your body. Because naturally, you're probably not gonna, when you're here, you don't get enough of a stretch. So if you do that, it just gives you enough of a stretch. You can hold it in place. Yeah. Did love the Cannibal Run. I mean, it's things like Smokey the... I was a big Burt Reynolds fan when I was young anyway. But it was just something about the Cannibal Run. That was probably a Dom DeLuise character that I liked. But I liked, I liked how episodic... Not, um, not episodic, is that the right word? How... God, you, for the fact that I work in TV, I should think about, <laughs> about what the right term is. But the fact it was like, there was 10 different story threads going on in that film. And it was like how it was all intercut. I do wonder maybe that's whether as part of what kind of... Uh, got me into like the brain space of being an editor. Um, let's swap arms, do the same thing with the other one. Because in case you didn't know, I mean, there's a good chance you don't know, to be honest. Uh, my day job, and sadly I don't do this for a living, I'd love to, but there's not enough, not enough people watch these to make it that I can do it for a living. Um, and as much as the patron thing helps, <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not enough to make me stop work. Uh, um, uh, yeah, where was I? Yeah, so my day job is a, an editor for TV programs. So people film, go out, right now I'm editing a program called This Farming Life. So people go out on location, they film these farms, and then I, they then give me all the footage, and then I sit at a computer and I edit it all together to make a TV program out of it. And so I do wonder whether, um, let's move on to wrists and forearms. I know I'm talking about non-rowing stuff, but you know what, we're stretching. So hands in front of your face, push them together, and then pushing your hands together, bring them down in front of you. Uh, so that your forearms are parallel to the floor and you should find you get a nice stretch into your wrists and forearms and possibly your fingers as well. Um, yeah, just the fact that when I was, like I said, 10, 12, I would watch the same films like over and over again because my job, a lot of it is watching the same program over and like the episode I'm cutting right now, um, I, this is the last day of it um, and I'm, I'm rowing with you over the lunch break um, and uh, I must have watched this program well, I don't know, about 20 times, but then I must have watched individual sequences within it another 20 times. If you think I've watched it in 
in bits, like in a 40, 50 times, the same program. And the point is, is that you have to not get, in my job, you can't get bored with it. You have to always watch it as a, an active viewer. So I do wonder whether, uh, as much as <laughs> at the time, I'm sure my mum thought it was all wasted time when I was just watching the same films and like watching the 18 episodes over and over and over again. I think that trained me quite well how to be an editor. And then films like, um, we're going to do biceps next. So hands behind you. Whee! Uh, as though you're a ski jumper and then rotate your thumbs outwards. That'll stretch the long head of your bicep. Um, yeah, films like uh, um, The Cannibal Run, like these, these ones that have like 10, 11, oh, no, wait, 10, say like five different story threads going through them that are then intercut. Uh, that's kind of, again, for what I'm doing for this farming life. It's like a few different farms you follow and they're all intercut with each other. So I think that idea of how you can tell a story by bouncing between different elements of different stories, I think I probably learned that or some kind of framework of that from all the, the amount of times I watched The Cannibal Run or other other films that do the same thing. But yeah. Um, at least that's how I tell my, that's why I tell myself. Let's move to triceps next. So hand in the air, but it gets bored. Oh no, when it falls down and uh, just put it on your spine and your elbow is going to be pointing in the air, but not very straight to the air. So use your other hand to just straighten up, point it up, and that should give you a nice stretch into your tricep. If you have the flexibility, you might be able to bring your other hand up and then grasp both, but I don't have the flexibility. Both of my shoulders are ruined after, well, my left shoulder's ruined after playing squash. No idea why my right shoulder's ruined. <laughs> Didn't play with my right hand. Maybe I should have, I would have been, would have been a better squash player if I had. Uh, <laughs> wasn't that bad a squash player. Well, I was really. I had no skills as a squash player. I just ran and ran, I had fitness. I could just ran and ran and ran and ran and ran. Um, but yeah, my actual skills with the ball, they always let me down. If I had a good day, see if I had a day where the ball just found like it would hit the mi middle of my racket all the time. Oh, it was amazing. I felt like I was a, uh, what was it? Hunter McIntyre, the High Rocks guy, says that he calls himself a God King. When he's in the middle of the race, he's got his inner voice, calls himself a God, I'm a God King. Yeah, so that's kind of what it felt like when I was, when everything worked on a squash court. Oh man, it felt amazing. But the amount of times that things would all fall apart. Oh, yeah. And I'd have little tantrums on the court, throw my racket and say, oh, brat. At least you can't throw a rowing machine, eh? So uh, we're at the end of this block, as in the end of week three, the end of kind of, so we're, we're, I'll take a rest day again and then I'll be back into a low intensity one. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, so for the next block of four, I'm gonna do all of them on the water rower, because you'll notice I did all, I think I did all of this week. I did one on the water rower, didn't I? Um, but I did three out of four on the Concept 2 this week, so I'll do at least three out of four next week on the Water Roar, um, just to try and, because I want to make sure and show the Water Roar people some love and, and not forget about you. I don't want you to think, oh, he only did a couple on the Water Roar, and now he's forgotten about it. No, 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 I just thought I'd do it this way. Um, partly laziness, because it's much easier just to have this set up in the studio and not have to swap it each time. Um, yeah, so anyway, there we go. Right, so uh, a little bit of a meander today. Whoosh, a bit back to kind of like old John Stiley of... of I've completely lost the point of what I'm doing. I should have been talking, I'm sure I should have been talking a lot more about technique and stuff during that row, and I really wasn't. So anyway, um, yeah. So actually, uh, the last thing to say is that this was, a, was yesterday. Yesterday's concept to work out of the day was five times three minutes for two minutes rest. Um, but actually the intensity, if you're gonna do five times three, you kind of have to take the intensity up a little notch in order to get the, the training benefits out of it. And I was a little bit worried that if you did uh, five times three, it would kind of nudge you into the zone five too quick. So that's why I added on one and it's why six times three, because it keeps it down slightly within that zone four, but then you're working for longer, so it's still just good for you, all right? It's kind of really, if you think about it, you've always got a bowl of how much you're working out and it just comes down to intensity versus duration as to how you fill that bowl in terms of your workout. Okay, that's kind of how I see it in my wee head. Right, we're done. So, uh, like I say, if you're doing these four workouts a week, that's the end of week three. I hope you're showing the same kind of fitness rewards as I am. Um, I'm certainly, I didn't actually post anything yesterday. I filmed it, but I didn't post it. I might do it, uh, but I weighed myself yesterday. I'd lost a, I've lost a kilogram and a half. I put on almost 1% uh, muscle mass I've lost almost 1% body fat. Um, uh, yeah, and so uh, I'm happy, basically. And after the Zwift ride the other day, I'm obviously getting fitter from doing this. I still do have a little bit of a muffin top. That's what I noticed in the last row. As I come back, I still do have a little bit of a cake shelf. Um, 
which is what, which is the kind of really the big thing that I want to kind of get rid of is that I've just got this little bit um, here that I'm not used to having. So that's kind of my big kind of thing, visual thing, is just to say, if I can get rid of this little wibbly wobbly bit, I'll be happy. And I'm also fitter as well, but yeah, there we go. We all have our goals, okay? And I'm not, I'm coming at this series and I'm not a fit, lean supermodel type. I'm trying to get back into shape with this. So hopefully you're in the similar place with me. Um, and yeah, okay. So this outro has gone a bit too long and I'm meandering, so I am going to go, is that all right? Cool. All right. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, please let me know how you're getting on. Remember to use the hashtag get fit with row along on anything you post just so I can go, hey, they made it that far for the video. Um, and uh, I will hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, row well, be well. Bye bye.